Dear friends, grace to you and peace this day as Christmas draws near. I uh, record this for you today, not from the sanctuary at Prince of Peace, where I was planning to do that, but instead from the chapel at the Longmont United Hospital. Um, and uh, the surroundings here are very nice and warm. I'm here with Kelly. Uh, we weren't planning to be here, uh, but she's having some procedures and tests done today uh, that couldn't wait until after the Christmas holiday. So rather than uh, being in the sanctuary at Prince of Peace for you, with the Advent candles all lit and the Christmas tree, um, I am here instead. And that's kind of indicative of the year that uh, 2020 has been. Um, plans need to be changed at the last minute or uh, plans need to be amended as the situation warrants. And uh, that is how I come to you today. I wanted to make this greeting though for, for Christmas and especially for all of you. A blessed and very Merry Christmas to each of you who are watching this message. This is a Christmas message of good news for God's people, and you are God's people. It's a Christmas message of comfort to people who may be brokenhearted. It's a Christmas message of joy to fill ears long pained by difficult talk. This is a Christmas message for Christmas 2020. It's a message of life for a world with too much dying. And hear me on this. This moment is the time for Christ's church to truly be Christ's church. At Christmas, more than other times of the year, values of Christians are on display. Gifting, loving one another, forgiving, reaching out to others, humility, celebration and joy, thanksgiving, I wish there really were peace on earth, but at least at Christmas, people wish peace for each other. Glad tidings are a part of how we observe Christmas with the people around us. Even if you never set foot in a church or never heard a word about the birth of Jesus and what Jesus meant for people 2,000 years ago and continues to mean for people today, you probably observe Christmas in some way. And that observation makes the world better. Anything we do in the spirit of love, joy, peace, humility, and comfort can make the world a better place for people around us. Jesus does that. Christmas proclaims to all that Jesus is born that a savior has come, that love is born anew for you. Jesus lived his short earthly life, lived in the flesh for only a short time. But Jesus lived this earthly life to defeat death and the powers of evil once and for all. Everything that Jesus did in his earthly life was done to that end. His teaching, his miracles, his proclamation, his revelation of the Father, his death and his resurrection all accomplished the defeat of death and the powers of evil once and for all. This year, 2020, we need that message. We need that Lord. We need that proclamation to remind us that the powers of sin and death have no hold on us, that baptized we live even when we die, that baptized we are forgiven even as we are sinners. We need the proclamation that Jesus loves us no matter what. We need the proclamation that Jesus calls us to live and equips us for life. This year, 2020, we need that message because it has been one hell of a year. A few weeks ago, I watched an episode of the PBS show Frontline. Frontline is one of my favorite shows. It's newsy, but it's newsy in a thorough, in-depth manner that I find rarer and rarer on television. This particular episode provided a, a glimpse of 2020 by following a handful of individuals throughout the year. People from different walks of life, from large cities and small communities across the nation, from different backgrounds and different ages. It began following them in the first days of the pandemic. 
and it followed them through the summer months, and then it finished just after November's election. Among the people that was filmed was a pastor of a large church in Iowa. In the first moment we meet him, he wonders aloud how he can do things like baptisms, weddings, and funerals when the church can't gather. Soon he seethes about how unfair it is that people can go to a lumber yard, which is essential, but not worship, which was not deemed essential. It's offensive, he said, clearly offended. The segment about the pastor really made me think. It bothered me, honestly, not that the pastor thought worship was important, because worship is important, gathering as God's people to praise and to give thanks, to equip one another for the calling of Christ in the world, those are essential. What bothered me is that the pastor didn't proclaim any sense of praise or thanksgiving or even encourage the saints who would view a national PBS documentary. Instead, the religious leader complained that he couldn't do what he thought was important the way he thought it was important to do. There was a clip at the beginning of the show of the pastor reading a portion of scripture from his pulpit to an empty sanctuary. And even as he read God's word, his anger could not be hidden. Cut to another scene. A woman sits at her table, kitchen table perhaps, a computer tablet in front of her, and her face is glowing. She's watching a service of her Georgia church uploaded to the internet. And she can't contain her joy. Her body moves as she sings and her face shines. Listen to what she said. I miss the environment of the building, but that is what it is a building because the people, we are the church. The physical people are the church, her words. And then she spoke about enjoying the comfort of getting up and listening to church online and how she's reached out and helped people through this virus. This is another thing she said. That part of what God wants you to do, just help people. I mentioned the Frontline documentary because it reminded me of a very important aspect of the first Christmas, a vital part of Christ's incarnation in Bethlehem that we can easily overlook, but is still relevant to us today. The Christmas angels, the birth of Christ, the actors who gathered in a stable around a manger, all the participants, the prophets that proclaimed the Messiah for many years before, John who prepared the way for an older Jesus, all of those people functioned outside of the religious structure of the day. Let me say that again. All of the participants functioned outside of the religious structure. God used all of them instead of the priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the temple officials, the pastors, the synod councils, the bishop. I hope you get the idea. Like in the Frontline episode, it was not the priests or the temple leaders proclaiming Christ's presence and giving a reason for hope, for salvation and redemption. It was not the priests or the Levites who gathered in Bethlehem to welcome Christ. They actually opposed him most of his earthly ministry. It was not the priests or the Levites or the Pharisees and those trusted with religion that cared for Jesus when he was beaten, arrested, crucified, murdered, and buried. And it was not the priests or the religious leaders or temple authorities to whom the risen Christ appeared. Let that be a reminder to us, the church, and let that be a reason to be humble. Yes, humble is a good word to describe the Christmas event that happened in Bethlehem all those years ago. The Christmas proclamation is a proclamation that the Lord is active, alive, acting, doing, and being God in and outside of the church, especially outside of the church. It is an honor to be Christ's church. It is a gift to be Christ's church 
with one another. It's a joy to be Christ's church. And it's an act of God's grace that we get to be the church of Christ, giving ourselves for the life of the world as our Lord does. But let's be humble about it. As humble as a Lord born in a manger, as humble as an unwed couple who can't get a room, as humble as the animals gathered around a manger seeking food and finding that a newborn baby is laying where their meal should be. I didn't hear much humble talk from the pastor in the PBS recap of 2020. I didn't observe humble behavior from the church in the PBS recap. I heard humble speech and observed humble behavior from outside the church. Christmas is about the coming of a savior who is Jesus. Christmas is about the light shining in darkness, about hope for the hopeless, about life for the lifeless. I don't find it a least bit threatening or the least bit alarming or even the least bit insulting that the Lord is alive and active outside of the church. Especially in 2020, especially this year, that is cause for celebration. A blessed and Merry Christmas to each of you watching this message. I hope and pray that you and your loved ones are well this Christmas. Christmas means good news to God's people, and you are God's people. No matter what your circumstance, where you are, no matter how you're celebrating Christmas, you are God's people. And the angels bring tidings of good news, of great joy. The Christmas message means comfort to a people who are brokenhearted, who are grieving, who are separated from the people they love, even who can't gather in church as usual. Sometimes we have to do things in different places, but we are still God's people. And the Christmas message to God's people is a word of life for a world that has way too much dying. Merry Christmas. Peace to you all.